This is going to be a fun one. I'm going to do my top five old world species. I actually had a couple people ask me recently what some of my favorite species were. So I figured this would be a fun way to start. Um, please keep in mind, this is just my list of favorites. It's not the definitive list of the best tarantulas out there or the best old world. So if yours isn't on the list, please don't hang me. Here we go. Number five would be the H. maculata or the Togo Starburst Baboon. Uh, sadly, I just managed to get some of these in my collection last year. When I first got into the hobby, I really loved the look of them. They're just so striking with the subtle pinks and the whites and the blacks. I mean, just I think just an amazing looking tarantula. But they also have a reputation for being pretty nasty. And when I first got into the hobby, there wasn't really buying up a lot of the old world species. I was sticking to new world. However, years later, I realized that I was kind of missing this one in my collection. And it was a bit embarrassing because I do feel like this is one of these hobby staples that you, everybody should own at some point if you're into the old world species. But uh, I, for, my first one was a sling that is now a juvenile female. And I actually picked up a second HMAC after going to a pet store and finding one there in terrible conditions, just set up like a terrestrial and not looking really happy. Here's my female. I just actually fed her this morning and tried to get some video of it. One thing I've noticed with these guys is although they have the reputation for being really nasty, and when I posted my HMAC husbandry video, several people did come out and say theirs were nasty. They are also very secretive. Um, mine have been actually very, very calm for the most part. If I catch them out and flick the lights on in the morning and they're out and about, they'll quickly scramble away. But I haven't had any aggressive or defensive behaviors from them. Now, that could change as they molt a little bit. And honestly, even if this tarantula was to become a little bit mean, just look at it. Just gorgeous. I love the contrast between the whites and the grays. Just one of my favorite looking tees. Just can't say enough about it but uh so here are some pictures and some footage of my two and as you can see not too bad um excellent excellent tea and one that i think everybody should have number four anybody that's followed me for a while probably figured this one was going to end up on the list it's the o philippinus or the philippine tangerine I love these guys, and honestly, this one bounced between number one, two, three. I, this whole list is kind of, in a way, arbitrary because I love all these species so much. It was really difficult just settling on favorites or putting an order to them. I got a couple of these guys' slings and immediately loved the look of them. They were very gangly and pointy and sharp and had this beautiful orangey tangerine hue to them, which, of course, gives them their name. Um, love the pill-shaped abdomens the sleek design of it. They're just really not like an overly hairy looking tarantula. They almost look velvety and I absolutely adore that. And the colors right after a molt are breathtaking. Unfortunately, the ones I'm gonna be showing here in some of the videos are my older specimens that are probably in need of a molt soon. But just an amazing looking species. This is a fossorial species, but with that said, I found that both of mine spend plenty of time on the surface and I don't have a very difficult time catching them out at all. And that's a sharp contrast to a lot of my other fossorial species, which I'm lucky to catch a glimpse of every so often. So beautiful species. They have a reputation for being very, very uh, defensive. I've gotten exactly one threat posture from both of mine, and it was when I dropped a cricket and the cricket bounced on its head. That was it. It flipped out a little bit, threat postured, sprinted around the enclosure, and then settled itself back in. So not a species that I've found to be particularly nasty, even though they've got a, a pretty good rep for being that way. So again, one of my favorites, and this one it could easily be number one tomorrow. That I will give the disclaimer with this list that I struggled over the order for quite some time. And if I do it again in another year, it could completely change. We'll see. It's like trying to pick your favorite kid or dog. Coming up, number three, one that I, again, that I just picked one, a couple up recently, about a year and a half, two years ago. The H. Polkrapes, also known as the Golden Blue Leg Baboon. I had to Google some of these common names because I couldn't remember them to save my life. But this one is one of the most beautiful tarantulas I have in my collection, in my opinion. I just can't get over the gold orangey body and those blue legs and I've actually been very fortunate to be able to get these guys to come out really well 
in photographs. Um, you can see here, the legs, the one thing that I love about them is it almost looks like the way the light reflects off them, that they're flat on the surface, almost like armored plating or something. And I just love that unique look. When I originally first saw pictures of this one, I saw some ones with the legs, you know, prominently positioned in the photo and I was absolutely floored by the look of it but I thought it might have been some Photoshop trick. No, that's what they look like. I mean right here that's pretty much exactly what the legs look like. Here's uh, one of my females when it was just a juvenile. You can see a little more portly. She was going to molt a couple days after this I think. But one thing I found with mine and I know this isn't the case with everybody is mine have been very very for lack of a better term, docile. This is still a baboon species. They are still obviously capable of speed, a nasty bite, but the temperament of mine has been really, really good overall. Um, again, temperament may vary from species to species. Mine, I guess I lucked out, where it's actually both of them are very, very laid back and chill. As slings, they are a little more quick and darty, but I found that as slings, they would build little burrows, didn't do a lot of digging or burrowing, and would pretty much go right to the burrows if you disturbed them at all. Now as uh, sub-adults, this female right here, which is my larger female, is pushing about four and a half, five inches now, stays right out in the open. When I open her enclosure, she doesn't move at all, almost like a rosy. My other one has taken to hiding a little bit, so we'll see if that changes as she gets older, but gorgeous, absolutely stunning species overall. And number two, wrestled with this one quite a bit. Uh, could have been number one again, depending on the day of the week. But for this one, number two is the M. Balfouri or the Socotra Island Blue Baboon. Obviously, anybody that spent any time on my website or my channel knows that I absolutely love these guys. Probably one of the most fascinating tarantulas I have in my collection. Um, beautiful colorations, that beige body with the blue legs and the pearl blue carapace is just breathtaking. I can't even get it to show up on video half the time, unfortunately, and trying to get pictures of it and getting it to show up is also difficult. Um, these are one of the ones I would almost recommend as a beginner baboon if there was such a thing, but as you can see, this one here, they are capable of getting freaked out and upset. This was more one that was startled because the critic, cricket bounced over its head, not one that was trying to uh, basically hurt me or anything like that, and I got footage of it because sometimes we forget the fact that these guys can be baboons. They can sprint around, they can go at you with the fangs, but I will say I've had three of these that I raised separately from sling, uh, large slings to adult and the ones in my communal and most of them have been very calm with no threat poses whatsoever. Um, when they throw a threat pose, it's more of out of being scared and they're not being confrontational about or trying to hurt you. Um, and of course, the fact that these guys not only can be kept communally, but thrive communally just puts them so much above and beyond some of the other species that I've kept just because it's so fascinating to see them get together. Most of us are, you know educated in a way to think that tarantulas are all highly cannibalistic and the majority of them are but these guys seem to actually thrive when they have other members of their species around them and I think that just as far as cool factor puts them above and beyond most things out there so one of my all-time favorite species as one grabs a cricket there and I think um, definitely my one of my top baboon species again maybe even the top depending on the day of the week and number one, I wrestled with because there's an entire genus that I almost hold in higher regards than most of the other tarantulas, and that would be Pisolotheria. After much deliberation, I came up with Pisolotheria vitata, or the ghost ornamental, for my top favorite. Full disclosure, I went back and forth between all the different species of pokies I keep. I love Regalis. Um, my ornata is beautiful. I've got rufaladas now that are growing on me in a big way, but I'm going to go to Vitata because this was the first pokey I got. This is her, actually her right here. I got her about three inch juvenile and just immediately fell in love with this genus. She was like my gateway pokey. Um, I love the look of the Vitata, and as you can see in some of the pictures, they have a purplish hue to them. Um, this is my girl before a molt, so she's looking a little drab here. I have one at the end that shows off some of their colors, but 
there's just something about the Pisolotheria species that is so amazingly dignified and regal, if a spider can be that. Um, it, again, I hold them almost, they're almost like in a different class than many of the tarantulas I keep, just because they awe me so much with their size, with their poise, and I, the sad part is these guys are an old world species. They are capable of huge bursts of so very quick bursts of speed. Their bites are nothing to joke about, like very, very debilitating um, th things can happen when you get bit by one of these guys. And I think that gives them a bit of a bad rap because the majority of them, and I've kept over 20, are actually fairly calm overall. If you treat them with respect, they would rather mu much rather bolt than attack, and they have little issues staying out of your way if you stay out of theirs. Now... Obviously, there are different specimens out there that can be meaner or nastier than others, and I know some people that have some pretty nasty ones, and it also depends on the specific species. But my Vitata was, I originally got it because I had heard that the Vitatas were one of the more laid-back Pisolotheria species, and mine really was. I have two slings now because, unfortunately, I lost my female uh, last year to probably impaction, never quite figured out what it was, and I needed to have more of my collection. So I picked up two more slings that are now juveniles, so hopefully one of those will be a female to replace my girl, but just a stunning species. And here we go, we're going to end on a high note with some of those purple highlights and everything else. Just amazing. So again, it could change considering whatever day of the week it is, but for now, that's it. And my one runner-up, which, oh, this one bounced around, and again, I had a very difficult time making this list, but one of my favorite tarantulas, Phlogis crassipes, or the Australian barking spider, or the whistling spider, or the eastern spider, it has a million different names. Absolutely love this species, and I feel bad because some of the keepers that I talk to, they're from Australia, they're only allowed to keep indigenous species there. So this is basically what they have. There's no beginner species. If you want to keep something, you're generally going to keep Phlogius species. But I love the sleek look of them. They may be just brown, but they're gorgeous. The one in the original picture was my Phlogius crassipes species Unice, which is thought to be just another coloration or regional variant of it. Um, unfortunately, I've yet to have a female mature out. I now have my species Eunice turn out to be male, and my original Crassipes, who's featured in this video right here, to show off the speed, is also a male. But I have two others that are young adults now. Yeah, look at those things go. They are fast, they have incredibly potent bites, and they are 100% lethal to dogs, so something to consider for people that have pets in the house. And I'm guessing their bite could put a hurtin' on a human being. Beautiful species, though. So here were mine. What are yours? I'm very curious to hear what other people think. Again, this is just a list of my favorites. And literally, I have a scratch-out piece of notebook paper in front of me where I bounce back and forth between all the different ones. But I'd be very curious to hear what everybody else thinks. So thanks so much. Hopefully this was fun. And if this ends up being something that people like, I can definitely do some more in the future.